few years ago, two of my students, Josh Frederick and John Bush, built a very interesting contraption for me. It's called a Rubens tube after the scientist who initially described its construction and use. Basically, a Rubens tube helps you to see sound waves. I've done several experiments with the Rubens tube, and I'd like to share some of these experiments with you. First, let's look at how the Rubens tube is constructed. It's made of a really long and hollow steel pipe. Tiny holes are drilled about one centimeter apart all along the length of the pipe. A flexible membrane is stretched across one end of the pipe. I just stretched a rubber glove across the opening and taped it down with some duct tape. The other side of the pipe is sealed shut except for an opening that allows for a flammable gas to be introduced into the pipe. As you can see, I just use propane gas. Let's turn on the gas to fill the Rubens tube with propane. It usually takes a minute or two to sufficiently fill with gas. After it's full, I just simply place a lighter over one of the holes drilled into the tube. Watch what happens. Isn't that cool? Let's take a closer look at the flames. At first, the flames tend to be very small and blue in color. That's because just a little bit of gas is leaking out of the holes at first. With a small amount of fuel exiting the holes, the oxygen in the atmosphere can completely convert the propane to carbon dioxide and water through a combustion reaction. And flames appear blue when complete combustion is occurring. If you look carefully, you can actually see some water collect around each hole. Where does this water come from? Well, from the combustion reaction. Remember, the propane that is burning produces carbon dioxide and water. Some of the water produced actually condenses on the steel pipe. I think that's really kind of neat. As the tube fills with more gas, the fuel begins to leak out of the holes at a much faster rate. When this happens, the top of the flames increasingly appear more orange in color. This is because so much fuel is exiting the tubes that complete combustion can no longer occur. Incomplete combustion is occurring, and yellow-orange flames are indicative of incomplete combustion. The tube also gets hot enough that you can no longer see water condensed on the sides of the holes. Okay, now let's see how this tube works. We'll go over here to the flexible membrane. Watch what happens when I push on the membrane. Do you see that? Pushing on the membrane causes the flames to jump. This is because pushing on the membrane pushes on the gas me molecules right next to the membrane. Those push on the molecules next to those, and that continues all the way down the tube. Now we're ready to see the tube in action. Let's set a speaker up next to the flexible membrane. The speaker will give off sound waves. Let's turn on the speaker and see what happens. Holy cow, what's going on here? Well, it should make sense that the flames get bigger in regions where more gas is flowing out of the tube and smaller where less gas is flowing out of the tube. When the speaker is turned on, sound waves travel through the propane in the tube. Sound is a compression wave. This means the sound waves make gas bunch up in certain areas and thin out in other areas. The places in the tube where the gas bunches up causes regions of high pressure and therefore large yellow flames. The place in the tube where the gas thins out causes regions of low gas pressure and therefore small blue flames or no flames at all. Now let's use the Rubens tube to learn a little bit more about sound. The speaker is connected to a frequency generator. This allows me to control the frequency of the sound waves coming out of the speaker. Each frequency corresponds to a particular wavelength, and only waves that have a certain wavelength can fit inside the tube. When I adjust the frequency just right, you can see the wavelength of the sound wave in the tube by way of the flame structure. And you can even measure the wavelength of the sound using a meter stick. Looks like the wavelength of this wave is about 0.6 meters. 
Now that we've measured the wavelength and frequency of this wave, we can calculate the speed of sound with the simple equation speed equals frequency times wavelength. It's that simple. With a frequency of 430 hertz and a wavelength of 0.6 meters, we find the speed of sound in the propane to be 258 meters per second. Some of you might say, hey wait, the speed of sound is 345 meters per second. Well that's true for the speed of sound in air, but remember, the sound is moving through propane, not air in the Rubens tube. Let's do a couple more measurements of wavelength at various frequencies. As we do so, feel free to calculate the speed of sound in propane for each case. Also, see if you can notice a pattern. Does the wavelength get longer or shorter with increasing frequency? Twenty four hertz, eighty two centimeters, three seventy four hertz. that the wavelength decreased as frequency increased? I did too. Let's watch this relationship play out as I adjust the frequency upwards in this next experiment. Twenty-six hertz. Three seventy-eight hertz. Four forty-two hertz. Four ninety-four hertz. All these science experiments are a lot of fun. But let me now show you what I really love doing with the Rubens tube. 